starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. That breaking news comes in a deadly hit and run that terrified people on Detroit's Belle Isle last weekend. 23-year-old Alexander Armand Smith just appeared in court to face four charges, including open murder and leaving the scene of an accident causing death. Prosecutors say he drove onto the beach at Belle Isle and hit two girls. One of them has died. A not guilty plea was entered on his behalf. His attorney tried to get him out on bond, but prosecutors revealed he made comments about being under demonic control during the crash. The judge said she was concerned about public safety and kept Smith behind bars. More twists and turns from this hearing during a live report at 5. The search continues at this hour to find the body of 17-year-old Zion Foster, a missing teen from East Point who is presumed dead. Today, Detroit Police Chief James White providing an update outside the Pine Tree Acres landfill over in Lenox Township. That's where investigators believe Foster's body could be located. The chief says phase one of the search is underway, involving the removal of 20 feet of material from the landfill. Police believe Foster's cousin placed her there when he found her unresponsive. This is something that's never been done uh, at DPD. We've got some people uh, that's working on this project that, that have experiences with other types of digs, uh, but this is just an unknown uh, circumstance, you know, having to, to take on something like this. But again, we're doing it uh, for the right reasons, and we think uh, anything that we can do uh, to help find this little girl, uh, we should be doing. Police tell Local 4 they believe her body was placed in a dumpster, then later moved to this landfill. The search could take a while. And the chief says some members of the department are volunteering to help. All right, let's move to the big event that will have all eyes on Detroit's Belle Isle this weekend. The Grand Prix is ready to roll. Sky 4 over the island right now. This year marks a turning point for the race. The Grand Prix will return to the streets of downtown Detroit next year, and that seems to be having an impact on fans. Jimmy Edmonds live to kick off our coverage with that. And, of course, our coverage is going to run for the next few hours. we got a fun afternoon in store, Jamie. Karen, it's an absolutely great day for racing. As you said, this is the final race weekend on Belle Isle before the race moves to downtown. I believe that has created some increased interest. It's packed here today. It's planning to be packed all weekend long. A lot of tickets sold out. Now today is free pre-day and that's a tradition that started way back with the very first Grand Prix. We have some video from today. The name is as advertised. A ticket, just not required. You're here for the experience. You could sit in the grandstands. You could visit the paddock. You could get up close and personal with those drivers, with the cars and the garages. I ran into so many people who say they love this weekend overall, but especially free pre-day, especially these families. They call it the opening day of racing. We're going to miss it, um, especially every year they've made it family friendly. You get a chance to meet the drivers, yeah. and um, I'm a big car fan. And uh, just, you know, having an opportunity to meet some of your hero drivers, I mean, that's priceless. I'm glad we got to be here for the last year of it. I, I don't really come a lot, but it's cool to see, like, all the cars getting built. You know, they had the cars disassembled, so you can actually see the engine, the chassis, uh, the, the driver's wheel, which is very important, the wings. You know, I was trying to explain that to him. He's a little young to understand right now, but hopefully it'll stick in in a couple years. Now that last guy you just heard from is a dad. Coming up at 5, I really found that racing is a family affair. So we'll talk about that at 5 and a really cool experience some kids from Detroit got. That will be at 6 o'clock. So, so far today, free pre-day goes on. There's more qualifying races. And then at 6 o'clock, there's a concert. If anyone remembers the Verb Pipe, they will be performing here. We're live. Karen. Back to you. Oh, we remember them very well. It's going to be a fun night. Thanks, Jamie. And I know we'll see you at 5 and 6 and, of course, throughout the weekend. Well, the full weekend of special coverage from Belle Isle kicks off tonight on Local 4 Plus. Join Jamie, Bernie, Smilovitz, and IndyCar driver Tony Kanan tonight at 645. The Grand Premier streaming on Local 4 Plus. There are a few times a year when the forecast becomes a little extra important, and this is one of those moments as thousands will head to Belle Isle. Paul Gross standing by with our first forecast. No pressure, Paul.
Uh, well, j just a little, uh, just a little. But look at our look at our sky cam here. This is our Belle Isle sky cam. D just beautiful day there on the island, and you can see temperatures as expected rose well into the 70s, and as expected, it's breezy upper 70s with wind generally uh, 15 to 20 miles per hour across the area. You can see we've cleared out nicely behind the cold front that came through. Watch as the front made it into Ontario. Notice those extra little puffs there. There were a couple of uh, just a few little showers that popped up, but nothing here in the metro area. And through the evening hours, we're going to keep those uh, mainly clear skies with temps falling from the 70s to around 60 by midnight. Tomorrow is looking great, but Karen, coming back in a few minutes, we have to talk about the details for Sunday. It's a close call. Be back in a few. All right, thank you, Paul. It's been 100 days since Russian troops launched their invasion of Ukraine. Right now, Russia is seeing more success than it did in the beginning. Today, Ukraine's president says the Russians now control 20% of the country. Russia changed its focus to the Donbas region after failing to quickly capture the capital of Kyiv. Now, Russia is making tough, grinding success. Today, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is vowing his country will be victorious. But many cities lay in ruins, and the death toll keeps climbing. Plus, Zelensky says 12 million people have been displaced from their own homes in Ukraine. Well, some of you may be tired of hearing it, but we are all keeping an eye on climbing gas prices with another new national record. The new average in the U.S. is up to $4.76 a gallon. According to AAA, you can see Michigan's average is even higher at $4.93. That is up 13 cents since yesterday. Tonight at 5, we will review what is fueling the increase. Why do those prices keep going up and up? Big time investors and millions of Americans are mulling over the latest jobs numbers and what they might mean for the U.S. economy. Today's report shows the employers added 390,000 jobs in May. It was the lowest monthly gain in a year, but likely high enough for the Fed to pursue more interest rate hikes designed to fight inflation. The unemployment rate remains at 3.6 percent, just about a 50 year low. President Biden says he knows Americans are worried about gas prices and inflation, but he's trying to accentuate the positive. At the time I took office, about 16 months ago, the economy had stalled and COVID was out of control. Today, thanks to the economic plan and the vaccination plan that my administration put in action, America has achieved the most robust recovery in modern history, just two years removed from the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. The job market is the strongest it's been, since just after World War II. Investors have been trying to figure out the impact of the still strong job market. You can see the Dow Jones down 348 points today as the markets close for the week. Now, the Fed is trying to walk a very narrow path of fighting inflation without triggering a recession. One of the big challenges in the job market right now is a shortage of workers to fill current openings. It's not just about bodies. It's about finding people with the right training. Some local school districts are tweaking how they teach students to get more talent in the pipeline. Paula Tutman takes us to a first of its kind graduation in the Utica School District. So this is more than just a cool logo. Stevenson Made is actually manufacturing, automation, design, engineering. And this is an entirely different model for educating students at the high school level. The students who are actually graduating from this program next week, they are better trained, better able, really more qualified than many college students are at this level to enter the work field in these industries that desperately need them. So who's going to run it? It's Wes, you want to be the star? Yeah, I, can, I can run it. A week or so before walking across the stage, these students return to where they were made, the Manufacturing Automation Design Engineer Academy at Stevenson High School in Sterling Heights. To make the head of the meat hammer, you do a lot of different milling. These are just a few of the 78 who will be graduating in the first ever class of the MADE Academy, largely knitted together by Allison Hillebrand, who could read the tea leaves and see that Michigan, a manufacturing state, didn't have the needed talent to remain a manufacturing state much longer without getting students into the pipeline to become workers. Students need to know how to do more than just memorize facts and regurgitate it back on a test. So the kids here learned, as you've seen, how to do practical, practical skills. And on top of, we have them presenting to business people all the time. So they learn how to talk. They learn how to be professional. You always want to set a tool center point so that the robot then knows, oh, wait, I can't actually move to here if the bottom of my tool is down here. Here's um, a sheet metal design. Um, which includes all the folds and different bends that you'd have to do to replicate a pipe like this. Gable Tech of Troy. We were having a hard time finding employees and the employees that we were finding 
weren't quite up to what we needed them to do. Teaches the students and then hires them and then leases them out to industries desperate for the experience and the talent these kids have at high school graduation. We wanted to, to introduce Ford Chrysler and General Motors people that knew their standards and that would show up to work on time and just talk their talk. Okay, so what happens to this first graduating class? Some of them will go on to two-year institutions or four-year institutions. Some of them, Karen, actually have gotten jobs before they walk across the stage. You were giving these employment numbers before we came to that story. I just checked the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. The number of manufacturing jobs decreased this month to only 11.4 million. That's how many are still needed. Stevenson's doing its part. A lot more still needed, Karen. A remarkable program indeed. Thank you, Paula.